So this chapter is going to focus entirely on talking about sound. And to talk about sound, we're first going to talk about its wave-like nature. Uh, it turns out there are two types of waves. Uh, your fundamental types are called longitudinal waves and transverse waves. And sound waves are longitudinal waves. Now, to understand what a longitudinal wave is, it might be helpful first to understand what a transverse wave is. Your typical wave on a string is a transverse wave. So if we fix one end of this string to a wall, and at the other end we oscillate so that string up and down, creating waves in the string. And those waves are going to propagate towards the wall, and when they hit the wall, they're going to reflect back. As we can see here, either the original wave itself or the reflection, they're both being propagated in the horizontal dimension. But if we look at the string itself, which is our medium, it is actually oscillating, and every point on the string is actually either being displaced up or down continually as this wave propagates. So, and when the displacement of the medium is perpendicular to the directions of propagation, that's what is meant by a transverse wave. So, and that is what a sound wave is not. A sound wave is a longitudinal wave, and in this case, the uh, direction of propagation and the displacement of the medium are in the same direction for a longitudinal wave, and that's what's happening here with sound. So let's start by taking a look at sound being propagated through a gas, in this case, like air. Uh, so first of all, sound does need a medium. Uh, you can't propagate sound in a vacuum. So, and in this case, I'm just going to have S here be my source. So we're going to be directing a big sound wave off to the right here. So when you see these areas, alternating areas of compression and rarefaction, these areas of compression where we have uh, high density air molecules at higher pressure, and these areas of rarefaction where we have low density air molecules uh, at lower pressures. And they just alternate as the sound wave propagates all the way across. And you'll find that the molecules are being displaced to the right here, but the wave itself is also propagating to the right, and therefore they're in the same direction, and that is what's indicative of a longitudinal wave. So sound being composed of waves, we can look at these waves, and they have a characteristic wavelength represented by the symbol lambda here, as well as a frequency. And as is the case for any wave, the wavelength times the frequency always equals the speed of the wave. So in this case, I've given you the, the kind of average velocity uh, or the speed of sound in air. It's 343 meters per second. We'll find out in a little bit that it's actually temperature dependent. So this value is actually given at 20 degrees Celsius. In a typical problem, they're going to have to tell you what the velocity of sound even in air is because there's some variability there. Uh, so if we look here, there's three variables in this equation. Typically, I've got to give you two, and I can ask you to solve for the third. That's what this first question here down below is exactly doing. So here you're given the wavelength of 1.7 meters. You're given the speed of sound at whatever temperature this is. So it's 340 meters per second. And the question is, what is the frequency? And so if we rearrange, we can see that the frequency is equal to the velocity of the wave over the wavelength. And so in this case, that's going to be 340 meters per second over a wavelength of 1.7 meters. So and if we do the math here, uh, you can kind of see that 340 is the same as 3.4 times 10 to the second all over 1.7. So notice the meters per second and the meters. The meters cancel, we'll end up with 1 over seconds, which is the same thing as a hertz. So in this case, 3.4 over 1.7 is 2, and 2 times 10 to the 2 is the same thing as 200, and again, 1 over seconds, or the same thing as hertz. So there's your frequency, 200 hertz. So let's expound on our discussion of the speed of sound. And the first thing I want to indicate is uh, the difference between sound traveling in solids, liquids, and gases. And we find that in general, sound travels fastest in solids, and then liquids, and then slowest in gases. So you might know this from chemistry, but solids and liquids are much less compressible than gases. And as a result, sound propagates much more quickly through them. You may have noticed that sound travels much more quickly underwater so than it does above water. So an underwater is obviously traveling through the water, and above water it's traveling through the air, which is a gas. So a few relationships we want to specifically look at here is, first of all, the speed of sound in a metal rod. And it turns out it depends on two things. It depends on the Young's modulus, as well as the density of that metal. So we see here that it is, uh, in some way, directly related to the Young's modulus. Not directly proportional, but directly related. So as your Young's modulus increases, your speed of sound is also going to increase. So, but again, it's not directly proportional, just a direct relationship here. We see here that your speed of sound is actually proportional to not just your Young's modulus, but the square root of your Young's modulus. So therefore, to get a two-fold increase in the speed of sound, you'd actually need a four-fold greater Young's modulus uh, from one metal to the second. 
We also see a relationship with density here. So in this case, density rho, as density increases, your speed of sound is actually going to decrease. There's some sort of inverse relationship. They're not inversely proportional, but there is an inverse relationship. We see that your velocity of sound is uh, proportional not to 1 over your density, but to the square root of 1 over density. So here, if you wanted to get a higher speed of sound, you would actually have to have a smaller density. And in this case, to get a two-fold increase in the speed of sound, you would need a density that is four-fold smaller than your original, uh, your original metal here in this case. We can also take a look at the speed of sound in a gas. So there's a similar relationship. Here we find that the speed of sound in a gas depends on the pressure as well as the density of that gas. So when we see a direct relationship to the pressure, so again, as pressure goes up, your speed of sound goes up, but again, it's not a directly proportional relationship. It's, it's through the square root again, so our velocity is actually proportional, not to pressure itself, but to the square root of pressure. So again, a fourfold greater pressure only results in a twofold increase in the speed of sound. We also see this inverse relationship again to the speed of sound and density. So as your density rho, increases, again your speed of sound decreases, but it's not inversely proportional, just an inverse relationship. So again, velocity is proportional to not 1 over density, but the square root of 1 over density. So again, if you wanted a two-fold increase in your speed of sound, you would have to have a density of your new substance here, your new gas, that's four times smaller. And finally, let's take a look at the speed of sound in air and take a look at how there's a temperature dependence. So, and it follows this equation, this is the one I'm using, uh, but you'll see in a couple different forms, some have a similar equation, but where you plug in T in degree Celsius, uh, some use slightly different equations, um, but generally have some, uh, some form similar to this one right here. Uh, so if we look here, as T goes up, we'll find that the speed of sound goes up. Uh, and if you plug in 293 here, you'll find out that your velocity of sound comes out to 343 meters per second, as we mentioned on an earlier slide. Uh, and basically, it's just a plug and chug way to figure out the speed of sound. But if you recall uh, from your chemistry knowledge with PV equals nRT, so that generally as your temperature goes up, uh, your gas expands, and as your gas expands, its density is going to become smaller. So and if you get a smaller density, your speed of sound is going to go up. And so jives with what we learned in the last section here. So as temperature goes up, density goes down, and your speed of sound also goes up as a result. Now with these three dependencies, you may have some plugging and chugging to do here, so, but you also need to understand these relationships as well.